Go ahead. May I proceed? All right. Just for reference, we have exhibit 866. Microphone, sir. Oops. Just for reference, we have exhibit 866 up on the board, which is where it was when we took our break. And we were talking about the 14 telephone calls between the Casio phone and the J. Jackson residence phone, correct? Correct. And you had told us that in your summary you had identified eight of those 14 calls as being placed by J. Jackson's phone or from J. Jackson's phone to the Casio phone, correct? Correct. All right. Now, with the court's permission, I'll put up the last page of 866, which is actually marked 3 of 3, but it's the fourth page, because that's the first page. All right. That's a little crooked there. Sorry. Okay. And on your summary page you summarized the phone records by putting this into a spreadsheet computer program, correct? Correct. And you have the eight phone calls here from the phone at Jay Jackson's house to the Frank Casio telephone, correct? Correct. And these eight phone calls, all on the 15th, right? They're all on the 15th? That was the question. Sorry. That's correct. And that would have been the day before the Brad Miller interview, is that correct? I believe so, yes. And these particular eight phone calls all last a number of minutes, is that correct? With the exception of the third to the last one, which was less than one minute. I'm sorry. And the three up from that is also less than one minute. You have one for 47 seconds, and one for 57 seconds. Yes, absolutely. Actually, sorry, I was looking at the wrong column. Okay, so let me point here. All right, let's just go through very quickly, and we'll just round it off. We've got a six and a half minute call, a three and a half minute call, a call that's three seconds short of a minute, eight seconds over a minute, a minute and a half, 47 seconds, four minutes and 15 seconds, 2 minutes and 6 seconds, correct? Correct. And we also see that these telephone calls were placed from 10, that's 10.17 in the morning to 8.48 at night, is that correct? Correct. And then you also have the call that was placed to Mr. Cassio's phone from the Venturis's residence. That was at 8.22 in the morning, and that lasted for 2 minutes, correct? Correct. So basically you have more calls being made from these phone numbers to Mr. Casio's phone than you do from Mr. Casio's phone to these two numbers? That's correct. Looks like somebody was trying to get a hold of Mr. Casio and talk to him, or somebody at Mr. Casio's phone, correct? I don't know that I can say what they were trying to do, but I can say that they were calling numerous times. All right, now, we have the, we have these eight phone calls you just talked about. And I'm going to put up. Let me take off that page, which is 866, and I'll put it back together with the exhibit and I'll deliver that up to you in just a moment. Your Honor, with the court's permission, I'm going to put up exhibit 458. And this would be page 2 of 458. All right. Is that going to work? Excuse me one second. Can I borrow your stapler? It's on this podium here and kind of bubbling up. See if that makes it any better. I don't know if that makes it better or worse. It doesn't, all right. The point of this is, I showed you this at the break, is that correct? Correct. And you counted there are actually 12 phone calls to the phone number of, associated with Mr. Casio from Mr. Jackson's telephone, is that correct? 12 attempts or phone calls, yes. All right, and in essence, you eliminated four of those and you only showed eight. I'm sorry, Major Jackson, J. Jackson's telephone. When we're talking about Jackson here, we're talking about J. Jackson. Understood. Okay, make sure there's no question. And in fact, this exhibit 458 is an exhibit from the phone records of Major J. Jackson, correct? Correct. All right, and your understanding is this was a land-based phone in his house? Correct. Okay, so back to our story, it's very hard to read there because of the glassine envelope, but it's 2 to 15, February 15th. Those are all February 15th calls and there are 12 of them, correct? There are 12 calls or attempts to call, correct. And you did not include some of these in your summary charts because you felt that they were too short? Yes, there were several of them that were 2, 3 seconds and less, and the other two that were less than 30 seconds. So there are a couple that are just a couple of seconds. And I can't read it from here, but there was one 15 seconds, I think. Anyway, your criteria was if they broke it down, 
If they broke it down into seconds less than a minute, you would eliminate anything under 30 seconds, correct? We did that with all records, correct? All right, but if they didn't break it down and they said one minute, then you would record it? We have no other way of doing it, correct? So using those criteria you eliminated four of these calls, right? Correct. But nevertheless, as an evidentiary or as a matter of your investigation, nevertheless, it does show that somebody from Jay Jackson's phone was at least dialing the number for Mr. Cassio's phone, is that correct? That is correct. And it was dialed a total of 12 times from Jay Jackson's phone and one time from David Ventura's phone, right? Correct. And more calls were dialed. In fact, more calls were completed to the Casio phone than were made from the Casio phone to those phones, is that correct? Correct. So you would agree that for the purpose of getting down to the actual facts here, the original exhibits being the exhibits of the actual phone records, are going to be more detailed and more reliable than the summary charts, is that correct? More detailed. I'm going to object. That's argumentative, your honor. Let's start with more detailed. They're different records. Let me withdraw it so it's not compound. All right, go ahead. Would you agree that there would be more detail in the actual records than shows up in the summary charts? Correct, yes. And you identified at least one chart where the, there was actually an error, correct? Correct, 3 to 9. Okay, and 879? And may I approach? And I'll exchange 866. I don't want to leave these things out of the book, so if I may. All right, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Oops, yes. 879, that's right. I think it was offered. I think this was received, 879? It was. It was shown and I think it was found to be in error, but I'd like to put it up. It's in evidence, I think. The error was found later. Okay, may I put it up? Yes. And the error on 879 is that there were not 12 calls between a phone associated with Evie Tavashi and Mark Schaffel, but instead, between Evie Tavashi's phone and Neverland Ranch, correct? Correct. And you, based on your review of the records, you would expect, in the ordinary course of business, that Evie Tavashi's phones would be in contact with Neverland Ranch, right? At minimum, occasionally, yes. And you understood that Miko Brando, although he's the son of Marlon Brando, was an employee of MJJ Productions, correct? Correct. And he's one of the longer-term employees. He's been there a number of years, is that right? I don't know. May I have just a moment, your honor, please? Yes. Thank you. All right, we can take this down. And may I approach to return it? Yes. And I have no further questions. May I have that exhibit again, please? And 879, please. Detective Bonner, during the break, did you make a correction to another copy of Exhibit 879, which is the chart for March 9th of 2003? I did. Do you have a copy for me, or? I don't. Okay, that's fine. I'd like to put the 879 on the board that we've already moved into evidence. And I'd like to show you exhibit number 883 and ask if this is your corrected exhibit. It is. Using the original 879, could you just point out for the jury what, what the difference is? And then we'll show 883 in a moment. I recognize that the mistake that was made is that on Mark Schaffel, the records say, Neverland Valley Entertainment, and what we did is we accidentally made a mix-up between Neverland Valley Ranch and Neverland Valley Entertainment, so I have relabeled Neverland Valley Entertainment, Shaffle, into Neverland Valley Ranch, and Neverland Valley Ranch, into Mark Shaffle, NVE. And this connection has gone from here to here and we have erased or removed this connection right here. You did that yourself? I did. Okay, and is that depicted on Exhibit 883? It is. We'd offer that into evidence at this time, Your Honor. No objection, but I'd ask, since nobody has a copy of it, if we might be allowed to have a copy, if the clerk can make one, if that would be possible. That's fine. I'll admit it. The clerk will give you a copy. Thank you, Your Honor. And with the court's permission, I'd just publish it just briefly. Go ahead. Okay. These are the changes that you were talking about, Detective Bonner? That's correct. 
the switch of the name here and here, and then removing this connection and making it go from here to here. Okay. Mr. Sanger was asking you about dropping phone calls from your analysis that lasted roughly 30 seconds or less. In particular with Jay Jackson's phone records found in Exhibit 458, did you follow that procedure for dropping numbers that were in the 30-second range and less for everybody? Yes. So everyone who had seconds in their cell phone records, you would drop those calls? Correct. Objection. Asked and answered and actually misstates the testimony. I'll sustain the objection. Did you drop calls that were 30 seconds or less on Frank Cassio's records? Yes, we did. And Vinny Amen's records? I don't believe Vinny Amen had any seconds on his. Just the ones that were billed in seconds that you could locate? Correct. Let me ask you about the minutes. Specifically with respect to Exhibit 451, that's the exhibit that Mr. Sanger. May I have your exhibit, please? The ones we did? Uh-huh. I gave them back to the clerk. Specifically with respect to exhibit number 5011, now you testified under cross-examination that the call at 611 lasted 4 minutes and the call at 614 also lasted 4 minutes. And is it your understanding that a 4-minute call on those records can be anywhere between 3 and 4 minutes? Correct. Okay. I have no further questions, Judge. You talked about getting Neverland Valley Entertainment confused with Neverland Ranch. Correct. And Neverland Valley Entertainment was a separate entity, correct? Yes, it is. And it seemed to have been run by Mark Schaffel, is that correct? Correct. Records came back to his home address. And did it appear to you that Mark Schaffel was attempting to use a similar name for the purpose of suggesting that he was part of Mr. Jackson's business enterprise? Objection, Your Honor calls for speculation, beyond the scope of redirect. Sustained. Okay, thank you. No further questions, your honor. No questions. All right, thank you. You may step down. Call your next witness. We call Detective Paul Zealous, your honor. You may be seated. You're still under oath. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Detective Zealous, did you participate with the team analyzing certain phone records for certain dates arising out of the records which were seized in this case? Yes, I did. And to that end, did you examine the records pertaining to these following days, February 17th of 2003, February 18th of 2003, February 19th of 2003, March 10th of 2003, March 11th, and March 12th of 2003? Yes, I did. Okay. Are you familiar with the phone records to the left of me, sitting on the end of council table? The other left. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I am. Did you actually receive copies of all that and go through and? Yes. I'd like to begin with the date of February 17th of 2003, and ask if you'd turn to the exhibit corresponding to that in the exhibit binder. Okay. Is that exhibit 868? Yes, it is. And have you gone over the contents of both the link chart on the front page and the supporting documents behind it? Yes, I have. And did you participate in creating both of those documents in 868? I did. And to your knowledge, do the contents of 868 accurately reflect your analysis of the phone calls conducted on 2 to 17 of 03? Yes, they do. Your Honor, we'd offer 868 into evidence. No objection. It's admitted. Detective Zealous, if you would just save us a step and go to Exhibit 869 and 870, I'd ask if 869 corresponds to February 18th. Yes, it does. And if 870 corresponds to February 19th of 2003. Yes. Do both of those exhibits accurately reflect your analysis of the phone calls on those particular days? Yes, they do. We'd offer 869 and 870 into evidence at this time. Admitted. If you could turn to exhibit number 880. Okay. Is that one of your exhibits? Yes. Okay. And what's the date on that? March 10th of 2003. And how about 882? Yes, 
That reflects March 12th of 2003. And right in the middle is 881, right? Correct. Does the information contained in Exhibit 880, 881 and 882 accurately reflect the analysis that you conducted on March 10th for the phone calls? Excuse me, for March 10th, March 11th and March 12th of 2003. Yes, they do. We'd offer those into evidence at this time, Your Honor. Admitted. No objection. Detective Zealous, if you could please turn back to Exhibit Number 868, we'll start with February 17th of 2003. If I may have, Input 4, Your Honor. Is this Exhibit 868 that is in the book? Yes. If you could please describe the contents for the jury, please. It is a visual graph that shows the calls between different parties on the date of February 17, 2003. Could you be more specific and point to the sections with your laser and tell the jury what you're trying to convey with that exhibit? This exhibit basically shows different parties involved, the number of calls between the two telephone numbers and how they are connected. Starting in the upper left-hand portion, you have a phone symbol, which we understand is connected to a Christopher Carter. Correct. That's how these charts work, right? Yes. And you show 12 links between phones belonging to Mr. Carter and Mr. J. Jackson? Correct. Can you tell us when those phone calls first began and who placed them? I'd have to refer to the Excel spreadsheet. Go ahead. It's attached, right? Yes. They began just shortly before 10 o'clock at night. It shows 2,151 hours, which is military for 951. And in which direction were those calls going? All 12 calls were in the direction of Chris Carter to Jay Jackson. Were any of those 12 calls longer than one minute? No, they show that all of them were exactly one minute long. And did they occur at a fairly regular interval? The 12 calls are approximately 10 to 15 minutes apart. After the first four calls and at 2224 in the evening, was there a phone call placed from the Carter phone to Neverland Valley Ranch? Yes. And how long did that call last? Four minutes. Was there another call immediately thereafter to Neverland Valley Ranch from the Chris Carter phone? Yes, at 2228. After that phone call to Neverland Valley Ranch, did the calls from the Chris Carter phone to the Jay Jackson phone continue? Yes. And did they continue at the same interval of frequency, approximately 10, 15 minutes apart? Yes. And were any of those calls longer than one minute? No. Of the four phone calls between Mark Schaffel and Rudy Provencio, can you tell us how many were going in which direction, please? It shows the direction as Rudy Provencio to Mark Schaffel. All four calls? Correct. And the calls between Frank Cassio and Vincent Amen, it appears there were seven of them. Yes. Were they in a predominantly one-sided direction or were they mixed? predominantly in one direction. The records, or the record source is from T-Mobile, which belongs to Mr. Amen, and it shows five of the calls being incoming. Five of the seven, I should say. At what time were the calls between Jay Jackson's phone and Frank Cassio's phone? Did you want the times? I'm sorry. Yes, the times. The first call was at 1,441 hours, which was at 241, and 1423, which is 223. And then which direction were the two calls going? One was outgoing and one was incoming. So one in each direction? Correct. Which one was first? The call from Frank Cassio to Jay Jackson. How long did that call last? Three minutes and 37 seconds. I'd like to turn your attention to Exhibit 869, please. Okay. Is that the chart for February 18th? Yes. Can you tell us which phone initiated the call for the J. Jackson symbol in the middle? J. Jackson. And which phone did he call first? Christopher Carter. That registered for 33 seconds? Correct. At 6 o'clock in the morning. At 6 a.m.? Correct. When was the last call on the 17th from Christopher Carter to the J. Jackson phone? 2331, which would be at 1131 at night. Okay. At what time was the call between the J. Jackson phone and the Frank Cassio phone? On the 18th? Yes. I'm sorry. 
at 1,806 hours, which would have been 6.06 in the evening. Was there a phone call between Frank Cassio and Vince Amen? Excuse me, Vince Amen at 26 minutes after midnight? Yes. And after that phone call, how long did that call last? 6 minutes and 27 seconds. After that phone call, was there a call between Frank Cassio's phone and Evie Tavosci's home phone? Yes. And what time was that call? 33 minutes past midnight. Okay. How long did that phone call last? 15 minutes and 17 seconds. Was there a call placed after that particular call between Frank Cassio's phones and Vince Amen's phones? I show another call between Frank Cassio and Vincent Amen. At what time? At 1.39 in the morning. Okay. Detective Zealous, if you could proceed, please, to exhibit number 870 of the chart for February 19th. Yes. Does this chart show additional phone calls between Rudy Provencio and Mark Schaffel? Yes. Okay. At least between their phones? Yes. And included in the exhibit are phone calls between the phones of Christian Robinson, Vince Amen and Mark Schaffel, Neverland Valley Entertainment, correct? Correct. I'm sorry. I'm going to object that that's, that's compound. I'll rephrase. All right. Go ahead. There are phone calls between the Christian Robinson phone and the Mark Schaffel phone, correct? Yes. And also between the Christian Robinson phone and the Vince Amen phone? Correct. And also between the Vince Amen phone and the Mark Schaffel phone? Yes. And three calls between the Vince Amen phone and the Hamid Moslehi phone? Yes. And three calls between Vince Amen and the Jay Jackson phone, correct? Yes. And in the lower left-hand corner, why don't you read it? Go ahead. Frank Cassio to Mark Schaffel, there's six calls. Frank Cassio to Vincent Amen, ten calls. Frank Cassio to Jay Jackson, nine calls. And Frank Cassio to Neverland Valley Ranch, thirteen calls. There appears to be one call from the Jay Jackson phone to Neverland Valley Ranch? Yes. What time did that call occur? 1,421 hours, which would be 2.21 in the afternoon. How many of the calls between the Frank Cassio phone and the Jay Jackson phone occurred prior to the time Neverland was called from Jay Jackson's line? From Frank Cassio to Jay Jackson? Yes, please. I'm not showing. They were all afterwards? Correct. At 8.05 p.m., 2005, was there an 18-minute call between Frank Cassio and Jay Jackson? Yes, 18 minutes and 33 seconds. Once again, it's not between the people, it's between the phones. I haven't objected each time, but... Sustained. Thank you. Was there another 7-minute phone call between the phones of Mr. Cassio and Mr. Jackson at 7.20, excuse me, 2026? Yes. And with respect to the phone calls between the Vince Amen phone and the Jay Jackson phone, can you tell us what time they began, please? They began at 1,050 hours, 10.50 in the morning. And ended at 2,125, 9.25 in the evening. And were they all from the Amen phone to the Jackson phone? Yes. With respect to the 10 calls between the Casio phone and the Amen phone, can you give us a time range of when those occurred? A time range of 11.07 in the morning to 2,345, 11.45 at night. Why don't we proceed to the next exhibit in your set? Exhibit number 881, please. That's March 10th. Okay. I have March 10th as 880. Is that exhibit 880? Which date? Yes. I'm sorry, which date? March 10th. March 10th is 880. 880. I'll be with you as soon as I find my chart. Why don't you tell the jury what's going on in this exhibit for this day, please? We have one call between Jay Jackson's phone and Vincent Amen. We have one call between Vincent Amen and Rudy Provencio. Their phones, right? Correct. Okay. One, or, I'm sorry. Five calls between Vincent Amen's phone and Mark Schaffel's phone. Four calls between Vincent Amen's phone and Neverland Valley Ranch phone. Thirteen calls between Neverland Valley Ranch phone and Frank Cassio phone. And one call between MJJ Productions, Miko Brando and Evelyn Tavoschi's home.
Can you tell us what time the call between the Amen phone and the J. Jackson phone occurred, please? At 1,355 hours, which is 1.55. Afternoon. And with respect to the 13 calls from, or between the Casio phone and Neverland Valley Ranch phones, could you give us an approximate time spread of those? From about 11.42 in the morning to 2,320 at night. About a 12-hour spread? Yes. How about the calls between the Vince Amen phone and the Neverland Valley Ranch phones? What's the spread on those? 1751 to 1918 hours. Of the five calls between the Mark Schaffel phone and the Vincent Amen phone, can you tell us how many were initiated by either phones? Four calls were initiated by the Vincent Amen telephone number, and one by the Mark Schaffel phone. Okay, now we can go on to exhibit 881, please. That's 3 to 11. Okay. Can you explain this exhibit for the jury, please? This exhibit shows the telephone of Frank Cassio and Neverland Valley Ranch. There's a total of 11 calls. Neverland Valley Ranch Phone and Tavashi, Evelyn, MJJ Productions, there's four telephone calls. Tavashi, Evelyn, MJJ Production to Tavashi, Evie, Home, Second Line, one call. Neverland Valley Ranch to Vincent Amen Telephones, one call. Ventura David, Janet Arvizo's parents, and Vincent Amen Telephone, there's two calls. Shaffle, Mark, Neverland Valley Entertainment and Vincent Amen, there's two calls. Rudy Provencio and Vincent Amen, there's one call. And Jay Jackson and Vincent Amen, three calls. Beginning with the calls between the Jay Jackson phone and the Vince Amen phone, can you tell us what time they began? 7.04 in the morning. And were those calls placed by the Amen end? Two calls by the Amen end, and one call by Jackson. What time was the call from the Jackson side? 15.03, which is 3.03 in the afternoon. Okay. What about the calls between the Vince Amen phone and the David Ventura phone? Two calls, one at 12.07, and the other at 12.29. The call at 12.07, which end was the Amen end? The front end, the initiating pend. Okay. And how long did that phone call last? 22 minutes. At 12.29. Was there another call placed from the Amen phone to the Ventura phone? Yes. How long did that call last? Five minutes. With respect to the call between Amen and Provencio, can you tell us what time that call was placed and which end initiated it? The time of the call was at 17.10, which is 5.10 in the afternoon, and it was initiated by Vincent Amen phone. Okay. If you could proceed, please, to exhibit number 882, I believe. Is 882 the chart for March 12th of 2003? Yes. Can you tell us what's occurring in this exhibit, please? It shows Jay Jackson's phone, or calling, are calls between a Jay Jackson phone and Neverland Valley Ranch. There's a total of six calls. A Neverland Valley Ranch to Tavashi, Evelyn, MJJ Productions. There's one call. Tavashi, Evelyn, MJJ Productions to Christopher D. Carter. There's seven total calls. Neverland Valley Ranch to Frank Cassio, a total of 13 calls. Frank Cassio's phone to Vincent Amen's phone, a total of 4 calls. Vincent Amen to Mark Schaffel, 4 calls. And Schaffel to Rudy Provencio, 2 calls. And Schaffel, Mark, to Christian Robinson or Site LLC, K. Robinson, 1 call. And Tavashi, Evelyn, MJJ Productions to David Ventura, Janet Arvizo's parents, 1 call. With respect to the phone calls, with respect to the phone calls initiated between the J. Jackson phone and the Neverland Valley Ranch phone, can you tell us which direction they were going in? All six calls were initiated by J. Jackson to Neverland Valley Ranch. And the calls from J. Jackson's phone began at approximately 7.35 in the morning? Yes. What about the calls between the Frank Cassio phone and Neverland Valley Ranch? What time did those begin, please? 13.02. In the afternoon? Correct. 102 in the afternoon. And the calls between the Rudy Provencio phone and the Mark Schaffel phones, were both of those calls from Mr. Provencio's phone to Mr. Schaffel's phone? Yes. And how long were those calls and at what times? The first call was for 12 minutes. The second call for 20 minutes. The first call was at 1904, which is 704 in the evening. The second call was at 2154, which is 9.54 in the evening. 
Thank you, Detective Zealous. You're welcome. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Cross-examine? Detective, Zealous, how are you doing? Good afternoon. I'd like to go to Exhibit 870, so I'm going to ask you to take that out of the book, if you would. And may I approach, Your Honor? Yes. May I put this on the screen? Yes. Okay, that's Exhibit 870 up on the screen. Now, you were one of the lead investigators in this case, is that correct? Yes. All right, and based on your investigation in this case, the day of the 19th of February, 2003, was the day that Hamid Moslehi was attempting to put together a video of the Arvizos, is that right? He among others, yes. Okay, he was the videographer, right? Correct. And he had a crew, correct? Yes. And you understand that that was originally scheduled to take place at Neverland Ranch, correct? Objection. Lack of foundation. Overruled. Sir? That is my understanding, yes. And then at some point they decided that they had to do it in the Los Angeles area, is that correct? Yes. And that's because Janet Arvizo was down there and wanted to do it down there, correct? Objection. Calls for hearsay and speculation. It's beyond the scope of direct. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. All right. So you see that there is a good deal of activity between Frank Cassio's phone and the Neverland Valley Ranch phone, is that correct? On this particular date? Yes. Yes. 13. And Frank Cassio's phone and Vincent Amen seem to be interacting with each other, correct? Yes. And somebody at Jay Jackson's number is talking with somebody at Vincent Amen's number? Correct. And also Frank Cassio's number, correct? Yes. And then Mr. Mosley he receives some phone calls, I believe. Does he receive them or make them? He received them. All right. Now, you were aware that Mr. Mosley he was also at the ranch during that afternoon, correct? Yes. So if he was making phone calls, he could have made phone calls from the Neverland Valley Ranch telephones, is that correct? I don't know. All right. He was at the ranch, right? Yes. And you see there's some phone calls that are made from various ranch numbers, is that correct? No, I don't. Okay. All of the phone calls are made to the ranch numbers, is that your understanding? There are five calls from Neverland Valley Ranch to Frank Cassio. Okay, that was my original question. So some of the calls are made to Mr. Cassio's phone, and you don't know who made those? They just came from Neverland Valley, correct? Yes. All right, now, I think I can finish with this witness if I have another 45 seconds. Go ahead. All right. At this time, on February the 19th, you understood that Rudy Provencio was working with Christian Robinson, is that correct? Objection, assumes facts not in evidence, Your Honor. Sustained. Let's put it this way. Your understanding from your investigation is that both Christian Robinson and Rudy Provencio were associated with Mr. Schaffel, is that right? Yes. Okay, and as far as the production was concerned, they were working on the production on behalf of Mr. Schaffel, the production of the rebuttal video, is that correct? Objection. Vague. Assumes facts not in evidence. Sustained. Okay, I have no further questions. All right, we'll take our afternoon recess. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Your Honor, may the witness be excused? I won't have any redirect. No redirect? You may step down. Call your next witness first thing in the morning. Thank you.